Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at Vex Rules, checking in with Vex U Team, Cal Polytech Gear Slingers from Cal Poly Slow. This team has been on fire here in their division, ranked number two, uh, as we're uh, wrapping up all the qualification matches as well. So, and I think the thing that really makes this team stand out, custom everything on this robot and aggressive manufacturing process. So we can't wait to see what's gone into both these robots. They have the green robot over there, gold robot over here, and by the way, as a Packers fan, green and gold is definitely the way to go for things as well too. But a lot of great stuff we'll be talking about uh, from their code, and you just gotta look at just everything that's gone into each one of these robots and a lot of the great custom workforce. So I can't wait to learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Joseph, let's break down both these chassis on these robots here. A lot of great stuff that goes into it, and then we'll be talking about the green intake also. All right, yeah, so um, on the chassis, we have both chassis are pretty much the same, some small minor differences, but basically they are both a six motor drive. Um, we have our six motors in uh, a line here, and we have two stacked here, and then these here to make room for the flywheel motor on this robot. Um, but same gear ratio, we have 450 RPM. Um, we go uh, 600 RPM on the motors to a 36 gear and then a 48 tooth gear on 3.25 inch omni wheels. Um, this has been working really well for us under defense, a nice balance between defense and offense, uh, strength, pushing power. Um, we also have these uh, sleds. Um, our custom ones that we made didn't quite work as well as these uh, prototype ones, so we put the prototype ones back on. We also have similar ones on this robot. This robot is a little bit unique because um, it has to go up against the match load bar to match load, and bar is the right gear, so it minimizes, or it makes it really hard to fit the sleds in a really nice way. But we managed to make that fit. That's what this rubber band is for, um, match loading and working as a regular intake. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty good for the, the drivetrains. And then uh, the, the intake um, on this robot, we initially started with a one motor intake um, running uh, pretty close to one to one. Um, but then we switched out for a two motor intake running two to one. So this is going at 1200 RPM right here. And so we turn it on, we put a tri-ball in, um, it'll, it really grabs it. Um, so this is like really grabs the tri-ball, really holds on to it. It does flow up and down so we can score on the goal really nicely. Um, and also we have this cool mechanism where it, we can extend the intake and get it out of the match load zone. So if you imagine there's a match load bar here, it'll get it actually up and over um, the match load bar and into the intake and then we can retract it and we have it. So, yeah, I saw the rubber band grip that as I went through right through that extension. Yeah, so imagining the match load bar was there, um, it, it goes right up and over, it goes straight into the intake. Um, no chance of another team one like getting a hold of it. It's it's ours and um, you know we tried wing match loading that kind of puts it down the alley that's not optimal because other teams can grab it so we really like this solution so both robots can actually get it out of the match load zone something i was going to ask you is that the way that the meta has evolved in middle school and high school for the vex uh vrc game is that we are starting to see a lot more match load steals uh or just tri-ball steals in general of things are you seeing that as well too in vex U? Um, to an extent, yes. Uh, it's less uh, intake stealing in uh, VexU, which is why we were able to go with the rubber band roller intake that floats. Um, it's not that good against a really good stealing intake, um, but it, it works really well for getting out of the match load zone. That's what's really important in Vex, because you can only match load into the match load zone, so you have to be able to grab it out of there really well. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Before we pass on, can you just give me a brief overview of what a typical match strategy looks like for your team? Yeah, so um, initially we'll start by, um, we have a really cool auto win point autonomous. Um, the, the, uh, we start by cleaning up the field, getting all the tri balls onto our side of the field and then scoring them into the goal. Um, uh, and then once we're done with that, we'll split the field left, right. The green robot takes the left side, gold robot takes the right side. We both match load out of the zone into the goals. And um, yeah, we uh, play offensive defense. Uh, it's a little bit of a hard balance to get the whole at the hang of, but uh, We've been doing pretty well, um, and that's a really effective strategy against most teams. Let's dive a bit more into some of the robot strategy and how the robot's working here. Garrett's going to be talking about the uh, wings on both the robots as well, too. Uh, and then on your green robot, uh, you got the uh, climber and the wall uh, that you took off uh, later. You're still rocking the climber, but I'd love to hear a little bit more about the thought process on removing elements of your robot, too. Yeah, so for our robots, we have two different wing styles. For the gold robot, we want, originally wanted the uh, 
expect our gold robot to be a little more defensive. So we have our wings kind of shaped down so that we can kind of shovel the tri balls over the bar. Um, and then for the green robot, we have a th much thinner design, which is meant to be able to go or over the bar so that we can wrap around it for match loading or um, so that we run into less barriers as we're r going throughout the field. For our climb, if we activate it here, it activates up and then we run into the bar here and it drops down. It's super quick. Uh, and then what originally what was on it was this was a wall as well. And so this attached here like this and we had it was a three stage uh, wall where the string was attached down here. And so this would we don't want to flip it down. So this was sitting like this. Sure. And then when we flip it up, um, it sat like this. And we originally had this for if teams we're trying to catapult stuff across, or if we're playing against teams like TNTN where we need to block some kind of crazy catcher. Um, but we found at Worlds that that's not been, that hasn't been very useful. This year it broke in our last match, so we need to fix that. Um, but our climb is super quick, it's been super consistent, and we're really happy with it. Uh, in regards to that uh, wall blocker, when you said it's just not as effective, just, are you just seeing less teams utilizing catapults and shooters and that sort of thing? Yeah, so a lot of teams are just picking up one ball from the match load and then going across, and there's a lot less, a, a lot of the high scoring teams, a lot of the best teams are, are just doing that strategy instead of launching a bunch across. So whereas that was more popular at the beginning of the season, it's kind of fizzled out, and so we decided to just take it off because it wasn't really helping us. Uh, talking about mass strategy wise uh, during the match, is one robot typically in your offensive zone and one in your defensive zone, or do they cross, or how does that work? Typically, I would say the green robot is more offensive than the, the gold robot, uh, just because of how consistent the intake is and um, the wings. Very cool. Um, as we continue moving on, Tim's going to be talking about the gold robot, the intake on that, uh, and then also this uh, deflector thing. I'm interested in learning more about uh, how this is working out, of course, with the climb as well. Yeah, so I'd love to talk about that. So this intake is very different from our other robot, and sort of the reasoning behind that is to get this flywheel to work. So this intake is optimized for getting it out of the match load zone every single time. Uh, we have these two flywheels on here, which was originally to launch it across the field. We started out with a catapult design, and one day when we were prototyping, we just hey, let's try out a flywheel, and we found it was working super, super well. So we just ran it, ran with the flywheel design, uh, as the strategy has evolved during the season, uh, we added this here deflector, which looks kind of janky. It's the only non-manufactured part on our robot because we put this on as a prototype. We tried to replicate it with manufacturing and we just couldn't. I mean, look at this thing, it's three-dimensional. So uh, we, the purpose of the deflector is instead of launching diagonally across the field and leaving a pile for the other team to take potentially, uh, we had this deflector which just sends them straight down the alley where we have a nice little pile for us to pick up instead. So another part of this robot is the climb. Uh, we have a hook on either side, it balances on the barrier, and then the hook, it's A to deploy. Oh, no air. So we don't have air right now, so I'll deploy it manually. These hooks flip out at the end of the match. The hook rests up against the uh, elevation bar, and that's how we climb. Uh, we have a hook on either side of the robot, so if we happen to miss or we're coming from the opposite side of the field, we can still climb either direction. By the way, I'm all about team jank all the way, so there's definitely nothing wrong with uh, having something that works as long as it's effective and that sort of thing, too. I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with that at all. So uh, let's start wrap up, talk about coding on your robot. Joseph's going to be talking uh, more about that aspect as well, too. We talked earlier about how the autonomous win point is a big focus of your team. So describe to me a little bit more what you're doing from a coding side to make sure you're getting that AWP every time. Yeah, so um, we wanted something that would consistently get the auto win point every single time, not rely on other tri balls, you know, accidentally going in the match load zone or something. So we spent a long time refining it and testing it over and over again to make sure it would work every single time. So the way our autonomous uh, routing works is uh, we initially have both robots just go for the um, alliance tri balls that start in the match load zone. So that way, before we push any of them down the alley or anything, we make sure that we get those ones out of the match load zone and into the goal. So that way, there's zero chance that they will, you know, roll away. Tri balls don't like to roll in the direction that you want them to go so uh, we want to really force them into the goal um, so we like spend probably the first 10 15 seconds of our auto like making sure we get that 100 percent of the time then the next 30 seconds of our auto this gold robot will go to the match load zone match load 10 of them down the alley uh, bulldoze those all into the goal the green robot takes the far side of the field uh, takes the ones that are start on the like near the center of the field and puts those all in the goal um, then the gold robot goes under the bar touches uh, the uh, horizontal uh, alliance uh, bar with these zip ties here, 
Uh, we have lots of zip ties here in case if we, it misses or something. Um, after 45 seconds, it's a little bit harder to know where you are exactly. The green robot, we initially had to go over the bar um, to start in a better position for driver control, uh, but due to a lot of tri balls just kind of going wherever, especially if the other alliance like flywheels or catapults them across the field, they can really end up in the way, and that'll mess up. Uh, going over the bar because there's a tri ball in the way and that will make it not be able to touch the bar um, And since auto one point is so important we scrapped going over the bar um, And we just sit next to the bar with these zip ties um, And get it every time I gotta ask you coming in the vectorals here Were there any new autonomous modes that you implemented uh, coming uh, from your prior event into here? Yeah, so we've been um, pretty much every event uh, changing our autonomous uh, to just be better our uh, first event uh, wasn't too consistent on the auto win point. Uh, we focused more on the tri balls and winning autonomous, which probably wasn't the best idea. But our second event, we focused really well on the auto win point, got it almost every match, uh, but we didn't score very many points. Um, and so we didn't really have a, a good way to win autonomous against a good team. Um, and at Worlds here, we uh, tried to do both. Um, and I think we did a really good job. Um, we utilized all 45 seconds with both robots, which we hadn't done at, at our previous events. Um, and that means that we're, you know, we're scoring the most points we possibly can uh, with the gold bot bulldozing a whole bunch down the alley, the green bot going uh, a whole bunch uh, to the start on the field into the goal. Um, we can usually get 60 points-ish in autonomous. For Cal Poly Gear Slingers, doing an absolutely phenomenal job here overall, as we mentioned, ranked number two as we're uh, recording as well. So can't we see how you do in the playoff rounds? Good luck getting to the Dome as well, too. We can't wait to see it. And thanks for telling us about these teams. A lot of great stuff teams can learn from this. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.